I always suggest that before you conclude your application that you try it out and make sure you've got all of the functionality that you're expecting. So this is the application that we built out and we can click on the arrow keys and you can see that they all get registered and they just registered within a sequence. So when we press either a space or enter, this element is going to run through the sequence and take the appropriate actions. We also have an option if we've made a mistake here and we don't want something in our sequence, we can always remove it out of the sequence. So now let's try it out. And you can see that as the sequence is running, I also have an option to continuously add in items. And this adds it into the array and it still makes them all functional where I can remove them out as well as it simply just runs whatever the next one is that's available in the array until the array finally concludes and then that's where it stops and stops executing. So we've got all of the functionality that we set out to include. So let's go through and run through the code that we've used in order to build the application. We did this all in JavaScript because of course the focus of this course and this let section is JavaScript. So we'll really want to focus on getting familiar with JavaScript, updating styles, creating elements. And one of the first things that we did is, so we've set up listening for DOM content loaded, and then we created an element, and that's this box here that we're gonna be using as our element that we're maneuvering in the upcoming parts of the course. And then we also apply a bunch of style properties to it. So we add some text to it. So there's some text by default inside of the box, as well as default positioning, colors, and a whole bunch of really cool things. So there was really here to highlight all the options that you have available to you within style. And there are just as many as you would expect with CSS. You can do it all in JavaScript, of course, if you want. And then lastly, we append the newly freshly created element to the page. And you can also go to inspect and you can see that when you inspect it, you've got all of the style properties have been added to that element. So they're all sitting there within the element and you can see all of the ones that were added. We also created another element. So this was the one where we could list out the functions that we want to run. So we simply created that and appended that. So there's just a sitting as a blank div. There's nothing inside of it yet. And we do add in the visible part of the actions that are to be taken within this div. Next, we set up the ability to listen for a key down. So any key presses that are done within that document element body. So anywhere within the document, when it's open, when it's clicked down, we're listening for key presses. If you're off focus on that, then it's obviously not going to be listening for key uh, presses because it's only listening while you're active on the document. We prevent the default action of the key and then we get the key code of the key. So the key code is a number that's associated with every key from your keyboard. And then we look to see which key got pressed. And specifically, we're looking for the arrow keys or when C is pressed, C is the color is 67. R is a random movement that when we press, so that's 82. Uh, so you can see that the background color is changing and this is just a random color. And this was a function that was introduced to show you how you can use math in order to generate a random hex string. And so we go through all the key combinations. And then lastly, we're listening for space or enter, which start the moving process and start invoking all of the pattern that we've set out for that element to move. And this is the moving function where we've got it self-contained. So we're getting that element's position. We're taking it out of the array that we built. So the fun list is the array with all the commands that have been added in. We're getting, uh, the elements are the ones that actually get placed within the array. So this is what we're removing. And that's why we've got text content that we can pull back. And then we've added in a function at the end where we've chained it in, where we're replacing all the plus signs. Because as you can see, the element's gonna contain the plus plus the command, and we don't want the plus sign, we wanna remove it out. So that's why we've got that replace plus there. And then what we do is we remove it from the visible part. So once it gets executed or it's about to be executed, we remove it from the visible part. We update the inner text of the element to have move and then whatever direction was presented here within the element. And then we look to see what the contents are and we take the appropriate actions, so left, right, up, or down, and then we move the element and adjust by adjusting the style properties, so the left or the top position accordingly. 
and we've got the original position within cur. So if we take the current left and we take our current width, then this will move it the full block over. So whatever the width of the element is, we're going to move it over one set. We also have a condition. So if uh, we've got the set timeout, so this one will run mover again. And while funless length is greater than zero, it's going to run this block of code. And when that runs out, then it's going to run this block of code and return the function. We've got the timeout set to 300 milliseconds. You can adjust that as needed. So this is just the time between the movements. So you can actually see the movements taking place. Otherwise, if you didn't have this and you were just running mover, you wouldn't see anything. It would just move pretty much instantly as it ran through the code. So there'd be no spacing. We also have our add fun function. So this is where depending on the key press, we're passing in a value and then we're using that value and up, we're creating an element, a span. And then we're updating the inner text with the value that was passed in. We're also adjusting some of the styling to the element. And then we're added in a few event listeners. So we've got a mouse over and a mouse out. So that creates that hover effect. Whenever we're over it, the background goes red and the text goes white. And whenever we leave it, then our background goes white and the text color goes black. So it goes back to what the original default color was. We also have our event listener. So we're listening for a click on each one of these elements, each one of these spans. So if it does get clicked, then we look for its index value within the array and we return back the index value in the console so you can see what index value was being presented in the array. And then we take that index value and we splice it out of the array, returning back the item, the element that we're removing out so that's within the temp remove, so we see it there. And then lastly, we're taking my function list and doing a remove child on this. And this is the current element, so it could be, it's the same as the temp remove, as well as it's the same as the span. So you could use either one of those in order to remove it and select it from the my function list. And they're all going to work the same way because they're all referencing that same element on the page. Then lastly, what we're doing is we're appending the span to the function list. So that's adding it, making it visible on the screen. And then we're adding it into the fun list and we're adding in that element that we created. So that's being referenced by span. And so every time we update and we have any key presses, you can see that it's updating the, fu my, the fun list array with all of the spans that are present on the page. And as you hover over them within Chrome, you're going to see that they light out light up because they're referencing those elements that are visible on the page. We also earlier, we had another option to make the movement where we had go left, go right, go up and go down. So from here, what we were using is the my block and we were getting the offset left or the offset top and doing the same thing as we're doing over here where we're updating its position. Whereas here we're updating the style with the current top and current height and down here, we're updating it and always subtracting 50. So the movement was slightly different in this case, but the effect is the same thing. So we still always have that option that we can go into our console and we can go right, and you can see that's going to move right 50. So there's a number of different ways to make the adjustment. And at the end of the day, you're doing the same thing. You're updating that element style properties, and that's repositioning it and making it move on the screen. So you have a number of different ways that you can make the movement where you can use go right, go left, or you could execute the sequence of commands and that's going to execute those out. So I hope you had an opportunity to try the code out. And I do suggest that you try it out within your own editor. If you have any questions or comments, I'm always happy to help clarify any of the content that's been presented in the course. And the objective really has been to practice and get more familiar with JavaScript and up updating and manipulating elements within the DOM. Thanks again for taking the course.